right. Okay, well, once again, good morning. Uh, and once again, for those who don't know me, I'm Zach. I'm one of the pastors here at the Campus Church. I'm excited to be with you this morning. Welcome to those of you also uh, who are listening and who are tuning in online. Uh, if you'd like to get better connected here, please reach out via email. Uh, we'd love to connect with you about what it looks like to have you here with us uh, on Sundays. Uh, now, I don't know about all of you. Who was here last week? Yeah, a number of us. Awesome. Uh, I wasn't, but that's okay. Um, I don't know about you, but I was really thankful for uh, Pastor Rob's message uh, last week, and that will be uploaded on our YouTube channel soon, The Campus Bradford. So uh, we are going through a little bit of an uh, overhaul of our kind of online media. So if you go on YouTube, if you're looking to catch up, and maybe you're away one week, uh, or you're looking to join in on our, our live stream in the next few weeks, uh, you can go on YouTube and actually look up The Campus Bradford. It'll bring all of that up for you. Uh, but before we thought, um, before we jump into our next series across all of our campuses at both sites, uh, walking through Ephesians, we thought we would spend a couple weeks uh, kind of looking at the big rocks of faith. Uh, now, rocks that build the foundation of our faith, because without a foundation, uh, things fall and they crumble under pressure. And last week, Pastor Rob walked us through what it means to have faith, what it means to live faith in action, and uh, how faith is actually an act of the soul. Now this week we're going to look at another rock or pillar of our faith. Uh, we're going to talk about this idea, this theme of hope. And uh, not some kind of like naive, naive kind of flimsy uh, kind of hope, but one that is actually built on the promises and the faithfulness of God. One that has stood the test of generations and seen uh, life change in people. Hope that, that brings us through life with an authentic faith. Now, this idea of hope, uh, it's kind of difficult, if we're honest, to, to preach through. I was, I was talking to Pastor Laird this week and uh, talking about how this idea or theme of hope should be really easy, but it's actually something that's kind of difficult to preach through and to write sermons about because there's been so many sermons written, and you don't kind of want to be too fluffy and too light and like, just have hope and everything is going to be okay. But at the same time, you also don't really want to be too heavy where you're like, life is terrible and we live in despair and everything is awful. And, but also, for so many of us, we've, at least at some point in our lives, had this feeling of hopelessness. We've been living through something, we've been going through something, we've been going through something difficult, a time or a trial or a difficulty, and we've felt hopeless. And when we feel hopeless, it's hard to look around and think, oh, I can't wait for that, or I can't look forward into the future of where God is taking me, or I'm looking at where God is leading my life. It's difficult to think about those things when we're feeling hopeless. And the reality is, is that we all feel very real pressures in our lives. Am I right? Yeah, we feel pressures in our lives, and if you don't, you're probably lying. We feel under pressure at many different seasons in our lives, and I'm not going to sing the song, but I feel like we hear all, maybe all about the economy, that, or we, we talk to friends who are stressed about uh, their mortgage or rising mortgage rates or financial pressures, or some are worried about their maybe receding hairline or their waistline, and that sounds funny, but for many, that's a very real uh, thing to worry about, a very real pressure that they feel. And many of us find ourselves constantly comparing ourselves to friends uh, online and, and, and matching our lives up against them, uh, against their seemingly perfect lives that they seem to live that somehow we don't. And we can, we can fall into these pressures and these silly pressures. But most of the time, the things that we feel are very, very real. They're very real in our circumstance. They're very real uh, based on our emotions. They're very real to us in our experience and perspective. Our circumstances are very real. And especially this time of year, uh, I know it's dark a little bit outside. It's really cold. There's not a lot of sunshine. It's pretty gray. Uh, I know some of us, maybe we take vitamin D just to keep kind of our mood going during these uh, winter months after Christmas. Uh, I don't know about you, but I love winter until about uh, January 2nd, when the holidays are over, and then I'm over winter. Uh, I don't know if you feel me on that one. I cannot wait until this snow goes away, and you'll find me on the golf course. Um, yeah, which is exciting. But in these times, it's easy to kind of let life get the better of us, let these pressures get the better of us. But when we were constant, uh, constantly were reminded about the pressures that all of us feel, the problems and the pain that is a part of our lives. And normally, 
People face stress uh, in life, and what do they do? Do they uh, go to a counselor? What do they do? Do they go to scripture? What do they do? Do they pray? Unfortunately, most of us, what we do is we just keep plowing through, right? Because that's just life. We accept it, and we just keep, put our head down, and we keep plowing through. And occasionally, we experience these moments where it feels like everything is perfect. Maybe we're enjoying a sunset on the dock of the cottage or, or watching our kids play with other kids, and we have these moments. And obviously, during those moments, it's, it's good to lock them in the memory bank for later when life uh, doesn't seem so perfect for that instant. Because also, occasionally, the pressure gets to us, and we crack and crumble and crash and are left kind of feeling hurt or kind of feeling hopeless. And unfortunately for many, hopelessness has just become their existence. It's just how they live life. And if it's left for too long of a season, we can begin to live there. And we just brush this off as, oh, just just life, live with it, right? We kind of become pessimistic to maybe the things that God is doing in our lives or the good things that we experience in our lives. But it's at this point that it is crucial to strive to discover how the pressure of life can help us find hope instead of despair. Now this morning we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at a letter that was written by Paul, who was an early church leader. We're going to be looking at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. So if you have a Bible with you in any format uh, this morning, you can open up to 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1. And now he wrote this probably less than six months after writing his first letter to this church. Uh, he did this often, Paul, uh, to help teach churches uh, to kind of settle squabbles and, and advance the gospel. And he was a mentor to many. Uh, but he wrote so quickly, uh, again, almost six months after the first time he had written to this church to clear up some parts in his first letter. But also to encourage this young church because they were under so much pressure. He wrote to them hoping to bring hope by helping them understand the purpose of pressure and specifically what they were feeling during this time. This church was heavily persecuted during this time. They were, uh, they were being forced to kind of bow before Caesar and bow before uh, the government and to turn away from their God. And they were uh, facing very real difficulties and, and realities that are very counter to what maybe we would feel in real time today. But they were feeling these pressures. And if we can get a grasp on kind of this same lesson, we can discover ways uh, in the midst of pressure to find hope. Now first, before we jump into verse 3 and 4, uh, like I said, let's understand kind of what this church was experiencing or what they were facing at this time. So uh, they're kind of this new church. They've experienced the gospel. They've heard the good news of Jesus, and they're excited, and they're, they're thinking, wow, this has changed our lives. We have this incredible news now that's kind of penetrated our hearts, and, and now we need to go out and live on mission. But then when they go out and live on mission, they get thrown in jail or worse. And they're trying to do their best to live for Christ. They're trying to do their best to live on mission, but they're in a very real scary scenario. They're feeling this pressure of life. So let's look at how Paul opens this letter to them. Uh, he says in verse 3, We ought to always thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so because your faith is growing more and more. And, the love, uh, and all the love you have for one another is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and your faith in all of the persecutions and trials you are enduring. Now, this doesn't sound like a church that needs a letter, right? It sounds like a church that's actually doing pretty well. Uh, there are good things. Your faith is growing. Oh, that's a good thing. Uh, your love is growing for one another. That's also a good thing. Well, we're going to tell other churches about how well you're doing. Oh, that's three good things. Why does this church need a letter? Why do they need clarification? So as Paul writes to these people, he points out some interesting things that are kind of taking place. And he reminds them that, again, their faith is growing, their love is increasing, they are standing tough, and they're facing things together. And this sounds pretty good. What's happening in this passage, when we look into it, is actually really interesting. It's not uh, what's happening in the good times. It's what's happening under the pressures of life that they're feeling, a time of hopelessness. But the picture we're going to see from these passages today is sometimes life can kind of feel like a pressure cooker. Does anybody have a pressure cooker or an Instant Pot? You know what I'm talking about? None of you? Really? Like a few of you? You went to Costco and bought one. Let's be honest. Yeah, okay, that's good. 
We know, do you at least know what it is? You know what a pressure cooker is? We understand? Okay, holy smokes. Uh, <laughs> okay, but I know this analogy kind of sounds, or this metaphor sounds kind of weird uh, to say that sometimes life can feel like or be like a pressure cooker, but hear me out. We can all agree, like we said, that times in life are stressful and that's okay. And it's actually normal, okay? I'm just gonna do a PSA. If your life is difficult right now, you're not screwing it up and you're not alone. That's how life can be at different seasons. Is it, if, it was, if life was perfect, we would never know the hope that we so desperately need. But under this pressure, good things can actually be produced, like some really nice food. If you think about a pressure cooker, you have this pressure, this pressure, this pressure that the food probably doesn't really like, but then what comes out of it? This good food. <laughs> And that's exactly what's happening here. Under pressure, their faith is growing, their love is increasing. And we can all agree that the food that is produced is good. Obviously, I like it a lot. I don't know if you've had this kind of experience or not, but sometimes uh, in my life, when I've had my greatest God moments, uh, I've been in a season that I would have never expected. I would have expected to be at church in the middle of a worship service like, thank you, Jesus, and had this great God moment or doing a, during a message or maybe sitting on the beach back home and just thinking, oh, God, you are so good, and having these crazy epiphanies of how good God is. Uh, but many of my kind of life-changing epiphanies, now obviously those happen in those times and those are good, but many of li- my life-changing epiphanies or my life-changing God moments uh, I've had in these, these moments where I just need God so bad. I've been so busy, I've been so distracted that I kind of get slapped on the side of the head uh, by life. But it leads to these incredible discoveries about who God is. Has anybody ever been there before? You're in a difficult season and then you just feel like you're like, God, I understand you are so good in the middle of this. We get to see who he has made us to be. We get to see what he's doing in his plan around us and also the hope that he gives us in these seasons. Because in those moments of weakness is for me, I know, and for many of you, when we feel the most hopeless, God reminds us that he is the giver of hope. Amen? It's not Zach's talents or finances or will or strength, but it's what God is doing through our lives. Many of us have been in those situations and where we weren't expecting God to move and he moved in the most incredible way. It may be under some pressure, God has revealed the way that he provides and cares for us and the way that he brings hope. God does some of his greatest work in the pressure cooker. I read this in my study. It takes broken soil to produce a crop. It takes broken clouds to produce and give rain. It takes broken grain to give bread and it takes broken bread to give us strength. You understand that last part? That is Christ's sacrifice for us. It gives us strength. Now, if we move down to verse 5, it reads this. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. Some translations say uh, in, in other areas, this is to make you worthy of the kingdom of God. And I feel like sometimes if we've been around church for a really, really long time or for most of our lives, it's easy to take phrases like that for granted. But if we understand everything that a phrase like that to make you worthy of the kingdom of God, what that phrase encompasses, everything that that means to us in our lives becomes one of the most foundational phrases for us to build our lives on, to be counted worthy, to live a life that is worthy, full of meaning and purpose, and to receive the ultimate reward to be uh, united with God in heaven. And usually we don't think about the fact that God is in the process of doing something in our lives even when life feels rough. We just chalk it up to kind of just being life. Life is life. And then you die. Has anyone heard that before? Life is hard, then you die. It's kind of a pessimistic view. But in, um, but in reality... When we think about this idea of how God is moving in our lives, it's important uh, in life that anything worth, uh, anything that is important in life, excuse me, is worth the effort. And the important things usually take a lot of effort. Who knows that? 
It's like going to the gym, you know, with our bodies and our minds. They're not healthy without work due to the brokenness of our world. Our marriage is not healthy without effort. Relationships with our children take effort to grow. And likewise, with growing spiritually uh, and maturing into all that God has for us. And yes, it is important for our Leafs to continually lose in the playoffs. So somehow, someday, some year, they'll know how to win. This year. Amen. But if we refocus our attitudes when feeling pressure, we can recognize that the Father is molding us into something more than we already are. And pressure, it has purpose, and we can have hope. Next, in verse 6, it reads, um, God is just, and he will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. And then a few verses later, uh, in verses 11 and 12, if you skip down a little bit, we see, uh, with this in mind, we constantly pray for you, that our God may count you worthy of his calling, and that by his power he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we have this promise uh, that God will do what he said he will do. He, he promises to be faithful. He promises to walk with us in life as we endure the pressure and seek to press on. When the pressure is on, we can discover that there is a peace in the process. We know that there is a purpose for this pressure like we, under, like we said already, but also beyond that we are able to find peace in it. And some of you are living right now in a season of hopelessness. If we can admit that to ourselves, we've been going through things and we're living in this season of hopelessness. And if you're not living in it right now, if not kept in check, you will find yourself in a season where you're just feeling hopeless to the pressure. We need to find peace in knowing that God is faithful and he's promised to walk with us and has a purpose of good. And this peace is a peace that reminds us that God is with us and that he is in charge and he is aware of all the little things that are happening around us as he journeys with us. And when we understand that, we can find peace in the pressure. We can find peace in being mistreated by others knowing that God is in control. We can find peace in out-of-control relationships in our lives. We can find perspective in difficult situations knowing that the Bible says, as long as it depends on you, seek to have peace with everyone. But sometimes even that isn't reciprocated. But even in that, we can have peace knowing the above. Now, don't misunderstand uh, what we're trying to say this morning. Peace rarely does anything to eliminate crisis, Right? Sometimes it does, but rarely peace eliminates crisis. But it does allow hope in the midst when pressure is on. Now, you might be wondering, I thought we were talking about hope. Uh, but we've been kind of jumping around about pressure to peace, to God walking with us. But all of this is the process of finding hope in our lives. It leads to hope because even in the pressure, even in the difficulty, while God walks with us here on earth and elevates us, but does not take it. Ele sorry, it elevates us, but it does not take away the difficulty because the difficulty produces maturity. And then, if we flip down in verse ten, we see that hope uh, comes in verse ten because there is good news for all who have relationships in Jesus. In verse ten, we find these words: "On the day He comes to be glorified in His holy people and to be marvelled at among all those who have believed." And this includes me and you because you believed and there is hope. And I realize that hearing that, uh, hearing that there is hope to be discovered in the middle of pressure might not be that exciting for everyone if we can admit it. Many of us would say, I don't want to find hope. I just want the pressure to end, right? I just want to get through what I'm going through right now. I just don't want to deal with this anymore, but that's actually what makes this point so exciting is that at some point, the pressure really does end. The great thing about being a believer in Jesus, for those of us who have accepted uh, him to lead and guide our lives in relationships, is that it, there is a promise that one day the pressure does end. And on that day, it's gone forever and we'll never be faced with it again because Jesus has risen and there is hope. And this is the news of the gospel that there is hope. Hope, and that hope allows us to face 
life every day knowing that God is in control. The hope that allows us the freedom to become all that God has called us to be. The hope that restores meaning and purpose uh, from sometimes the rubble of our seemingly shattered lives. We do not have to face problems, pain, and pressure alone. The one who created us and loves us will be with us through every situation. I'll invite the worship team back up. But uh, So where do we go from here? What is the application for our lives? Well, I think there's a few. Uh, and number one is uh, if you don't know this hope, if you're here for the very first time or if your parents made you come or if your spouse made you come or you're tuning in with us online and you don't know the hope that Christ brings into our lives. You don't know the love and the grace that God so freely gives. I encourage you over this next time of worship and over this week to look within yourself and ask, is it really a stretch? Is it really a stretch? Did the world just explode and become something or is it really a stretch to believe that there is a creator in heaven and on earth who not only created all these beautiful things that we see but also created me? And further than that, we are made in his image because he loves us. He knows every hair on our heads, every situation we face, every difficulty we walk through. And because he loves us, he doesn't just let us walk through that alone, but he actually walks with us. And even if it couldn't get any better than that, he produces maturity and brings good things out of those times of difficulty. And it's a theme all through life. The things that require effort produce good. And even if it couldn't get even any better than that, there's also a promise of hope that one day it will all be finished and he will return. And we don't have to wonder what happens when we take our final lap around the sun. We don't have questions about what happens after that day. And if that's you, uh, whether you're here with us or whether you're online, please, please talk to one of the staff, send us an email uh, or talk to anybody that you see scurrying around being busy because they're probably involved in some capacity of what we're doing. They would love to talk with you uh, about what that means for your life and how God can actually do a complete renovation of your heart as we seek to grow in him more. If that's you, don't let pressure just be pressure, but actually let it have purpose. And second, if you're somebody who finds their hope Uh, in Christ and you have accepted that free gift, if you've been coming to church for a long time and and Christ is active and real in your life and you've said, Jesus, I want you to lead my life, maybe you're feeling or you've been given or you're in a season of hopelessness. I've been there. I've been in a season of hopelessness. Many of our staff have been in those seasons. I know Pastor Rob has been in that season. So many of us have been in these seasons where we just feel like we're hopeless. Maybe you're tired of praying for your kid who just can't get out of their own way. You know stories of people in our community that they prayed for 10 years for their kid who was homeless in Toronto and doing drugs. They prayed for 10 years and finally that kid had an awakening and came back to Christ and now is now is married with kids and serves at church and has a stable job and all those things. Never stop praying, but maybe you're just, you're feeling tired and hopeless of praying for your kid. Maybe you're tired of arguing with your spouse or you're tired of kind of being passed over at work and you're feeling like nobody sees the work that I do. I work hard. I work my butt off. Nobody sees what I'm doing. You're living as if God has made no actual difference in your life. I think often we have to ask ourselves, has our mood become our master? Has the way I feel become the leader of my life? Are we controlled and make decisions based on our mood and how how we feel? Or is it based on the hope that we have in Christ? And the access that we have through the Holy Spirit in relationship? Oftentimes Christians have this tendency to kind of falsely identify God's peace as simply uh, an emotional state, how I feel. If I feel God's peace, then I can do A, B, and C. If I don't feel God's peace, then I'm going to do whatever comes next in the alphabet. We have the, I couldn't think of it, sorry. (laughs) There's a lot that goes on up here during this time. (laughs) 
But we get in these emotional states. It's okay, we can be vulnerable in church. We get in these emotional states where we confuse God's peace with the way we feel on the inside. If we feel anxious about a situation or in a season or a decision or we're under pressure, then we assume it's, no, that's not God. That's not what God is doing in my life. But our perspective should shift to find peace within our circumstance, find purpose within the pressure. And based on how the Bible describes God and God's involvement in our lives and the hope that is to come, is Zach the ruler of Zach's life? Does Zach get to make all the decisions based on how he feels, whether he's mad or sad or happy? Or is he being led by all that Christ has for him? Are you being led by all that Christ has for you? This isn't just a young person's message either. Because as we know, life doesn't get easier as we get older. It actually generally gets more difficult. I thought I knew everything when I was 19. Now at 30, I realize I knew less than I knew then. And at 50, I'll probably realize I knew less than I knew now, if that made sense. Life gets more difficult. And the pressures become more difficult. I know for, for some who are on maybe the, they've had a few more laps around the sun than, than some of us young bucks, you're really thinking, what is my purpose in this next season? What is my purpose? What is God leading me into this next season? But you have a calling on your life to mentor and disciple those who are coming after you. Just because you're at a certain age doesn't mean that you're, you don't have a purpose anymore. You actually have more of a purpose to pour into those who are coming and wanting to see God do amazing things through them in their lives to change lives and see uh, people come to know Christ in a very real way. I think this week, we could ponder on these thoughts of, do I feel peace within the pressure? And am I finding hope in the hopeless? When things of life come, am I just letting it get to me or am I actually using it for what God intended it to be? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that God, you have promised to walk with us, that you have promised a hope to us, God, and that you are faithful. And Lord, every step of the way, when we look back on our lives, we see that you were in every season, every circumstance, every conversation. And even when those times uh, were hard, even when those, those seasons were difficult, Lord, that you were there. Lord, that you were there leading us, that you were guiding our steps. Lord, would we not lose heart? in seeing you do incredible things in the lives of those around us and building into us as we grow in maturity. Lord, would we never be at a place where we stop seeking to grow in into more of who you have designed us to be. And as we grow in you, Lord, will we become more mature, will we make better decisions, and will we have uh, the, the mindset to disciple and to mentor those who are coming after us. Lord, we know that you are the bringer of hope. And all of these steps build into this process of everything that you have called us to be and the hope that you have given us. Lord, would you mold us this week? Would we have a perspective that is fixed on you, not our circumstance? And would we glory in the hope that you give? In your name we pray, amen. Let's continue to worship.